Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the roles and responsibilities of Azure Administrator. So being Azure Administrator, you are responsible for managing the Azure operations. Let's say that you, you should all, you should know how to create a virtual machine. So the creation of the VM could be through Azure portal or it could be through Azure PowerShell commands and it could be through a CLI. And if you would like to go a bit advanced, um, you might be using ARM templates and uh, you know Terraform. So these are the different deployment methods what you have to create a virtual machine or to create a virtual infrastructure in Azure. So being Azure administrator, you should also know how do you ensure that your VMs are highly available. Okay, so since it is the Microsoft Azure platform uh, and um, these your virtual machines are hosted in the Microsoft uh, Physical Data Center, which is being managed by Microsoft, and you don't have control over the backend infrastructure. So there could be chances that your virtual machine might be down whenever there is a hardware failure at Microsoft data center level, or there could be some network connectivity issues. There could be various reasons why, you know, the underlying data center might be down. So in such scenarios, you need to ensure that the applications which are hosted on the Azure virtual machines are highly available. So you need to know the, what are the high availability options, um, you know, to provide high availability for your applications which are running inside the you know uh, uh, virtual machines so microsoft introduced a concept of availability set and availability zone with the help of um, availability set and availability zone you will ensure that at least one vm is available to process your you know users request right so if you wanted to provide disaster recovery solution in, in, in the situation like, you know, if one of the region is down, you wanted to ensure that your VMs are, or applications are available in the, you know, target region. So you have something called ASR, Microsoft uses ASR, Azure Site Recovery to provide high availability solutions during the uh, disaster situations uh, in a regional level. So the other important thing that you need to know, how do you monitor your Azure and environment? Right. So monitoring with the log analytics workspace. So you can monitor your Azure environment. Let's say that your virtual mission is, uh, you know, going under high memory utilization or you know, high CPU utilization or high disk utilization. So you have Azure log analytics workspace with the help of Azure log analytics workspace. You can actually monitor the Azure, you know, infrastructure components. It's not only the uh, VM, CPU, memory, and disk. Uh, it's also important to know that if your VM has got impacted because of uh, issues at Microsoft, let's say platform initiated alerts. So if you wanted to get notifications, if you wanted to uh, get alerted through emails, or if you wanted to have an integration with your one of the ticketing tool, it could be Salesforce or a service now. So you can use Log Analytics Workspace for the same which will give you an option to enable alerts and which will also give you an option to create a beautiful dashboards and you can also create a workbooks with the different filters enabled. So the other important thing is that you need to know how do you provide security for your workloads in Azure? So Microsoft uh, provides security at different layers. Um, so the first thing is, uh, you know, the users who log into Microsoft Azure portal with the privileged accounts, let's say you are a owner of the subscription, you have a contributor access to the subscription, or you have a reader access to the subscription, right? So the first and for foremost thing that, you know, you will log into the Microsoft Azure portal or in a PowerShell or a CLI to manage your resources. To provide security in the uh, you know login page or you know while authentication, so Microsoft introduced a concept of MFA. You can use multi-factor authentication to provide another layer of security for your user sign-in, so that users uh, you know logins are uh, valid and uh, no other unauthorized users log into the environment. This is to ensure that your resources are managed securely in the Azure platform. The other approach, what you can see is you restrict your access to the uh, Azure virtual machine. So Microsoft uh, introduced network security groups. 
and uh, application security groups and you have something called uh, virtual appliances so you can use your azure firewall and you have something called application gateway so there are many other services which are introduced to provide network level security so you can allow or block the communications in a different layers to prevent any you know attacks okay so this is about security part and being an azure administrator you should also know how do you uh, how do you patch your servers how do you patch so you can use um, uh, Azure native services. Most of the customers might be purchasing the third party tools like you know, uh, Blade Logic, Big Fix, and uh, some of the customers using some native uh, uh, on premises AD services like you know, uh, Windows Server Update Service and you know, System Center uh, Configuration Manager to push some updates. So Microsoft introduced the introduced uh, Azure native services that is Azure Update Manager. With the Azure Update Manager, you can patch your, your all Azure virtual machines, uh, be it a Windows or Linux, uh, right? Any, any platform of the operating system, you can uh, patch them using the Azure Update Manager. So that is one of the beauty you, know, you have with the Azure Update Manager. And the other thing is automation. So if you wanted to automate, uh, automate certain you know, task, infrastructure operational task, let's say, you wanted to save the cost for your business and you have a specific customer where they, they do not log in after the business hours. So, and they only log in in the business hours, right? So if you wanted to perform certain tasks, like let's say that you wanted to shut down the resources of the customer business hours and start the missions using the, you know, customer business hours, you can use Azure automation run books to, you know, perform certain operations and it, it has a, a lot of capabilities and few of them are I'm giving as an example, right? So being Azure administrator, you need to know all these components because you will do these operations in day in day out. It's not only the configuration of the resources, you need to know how do you manage the resources, right? So now let's say you created a virtual machine. Later, if the virtual machine is not accessing, let's say, your users complaining that they're not able to RDP to the server. They're not able to SSH to the server. So what are the rules and response? Or what are the steps that you stay, you take uh, to fix the problem, right? So you need to know how users are connecting. Are they connected through a VPN? Are they using the right public IP address? Are they, you know, in the network where you allow the communications within the network security, you know, security group or virtual appliances or various network layers, right? Network sources. So you need to have capabilities to identify the problem and uh, fix the issues. And you also should be having a skill set on how do you troubleshoot the performance issues? If one of the user complaining that, you know, the application is performing very slow. Uh, when they try to access the application, it is very, very slow. So how do you start troubleshooting to fix the problem? Is it an issue with the application? Is it an issue at a user end? Is it an issue at a server end, right? So do you look at the performance counters of your virtual machine? And uh, how do you check in Azure? Uh, so those things you should be aware of it if you are an Azure administrator. So those things can be monitored with the, with the help of Azure Log Analytics Workspace uh, because it's a native service that Microsoft introduced. So uh, that's one of the beautiful tool. You should also know how do you configure backup uh, to provide business continuity solutions, just in case if uh, your virtual machine is deleted by somebody, or you know your your virtual machine is not accessible post your patching, and uh, maybe there could be other scenarios that you know uh, you, your application team might have done some application upgrade post that your VM is not able to connect. You wanted to go back to the previous state, then you need to know how to configure backup and uh, how to troubleshoot the issues if the backup failed, and uh, you should also know. Uh, how do you perform the restores? What are the different uh, restore options you have it? The another and most important thing that I mentioned is the high availability concept, uh, which is ASR, Azure Site Recovery. ASR provides the uh, you know disaster recovery solutions in case if uh, 
regional level outages happened so it it spin up the environment in the target location in a, you know fraction of few minutes right so you need to know how to configure the replication and how do you monitor the replication in case the repl replication is uh, fail how to troubleshoot the replication issues right so those things you should be aware and you should know how to perform the failover and how to perform the reprotect and fail back. So there, there's a end-to-end -end workflow that you should be aware if you are an Azure administrator, right? So these are the some of the basic or you know, core components that you should know. And uh, along with that, you should know Azure Load Balancer. Uh, so what is Azure Load Balancer and where we use the Load Balancer? What is the scenario? So just take an example, you have a very critical application running in Azure and you wanted to you know, ensure that the application is highly available even there is an issue at Microsoft, right? You keep the VMC in availability set or availability zone to ensure that at least one machine is available. Let's say there is, there is a real problem happened at Microsoft and, and uh, one of the VM is down. You have another VM which is running fine, but how do you ensure that your customer's traffic is routing to the available machine? So that can be done using the Azure Load Balancer. You should know how to configure the Load Balancer and how to add your web servers or database servers to the you know, backend pool and how to configure the Load Balancer rules and how to monitor the Load Balancer traffic, right? How do you ensure that you know traffic is distributed correctly, right? So those things you should know as a Azure administrator. Uh, adding to this, you know, there are some scenarios where you upload data to a centralized storage. So Microsoft Azure provides uh, various storage capabilities, blob storage, file storage, table storage, and queue storage. Different applications might be using, uh, you know, these storage components in a different ways. So you need to know what is storage and what are its capabilities and where do we use it? What are the real business use cases, right? Then, then it will be easy for you to manage the environment, okay? Then after this, then you, you might also need to learn Azure AD, uh, which is one of the important thing in Azure, Microsoft Azure platform. It provides the authentication authorization for the all cloud-based applications um, and the users who log into the cloud-based applications. It also helps you in providing single sign-on and various other capabilities. So it provides the identity and access management capabilities. Uh, it is almost similar as what you uh, have in on-premise Active Directory, but it is not the same. It also have some extended capabilities by uh, introducing new features called Azure AD Domain Services and some other capabilities, some other features. So you need to know what is Azure AD and how do you create users in the cloud and how do you synchronize the on-premises AD users to the cloud using AD Connect and how do you integrate applications with the Azure AD and how do you configure a single sign-on? How do you monitor these sign-on sign -on issues and how do you troubleshoot them? So you need to also know about um, <clears throat> Azure Traffic Manager. Um, this is again, one of the load balancing solution that Microsoft provides. It distributes the traffic uh, based on the DNS queries. Uh, you can distribute the traffic between across uh, multiple regions. Uh, so, so in case if, if there is a regional level outages, you know, the traffic can be distributed across uh, different regions. So you need to know what is traffic manager, what are the different profiles you have, what are the different routing methods you have, right? So if you know these core components, right? And it is nothing like, you know, you need to know how to create them. You need to know what is the purpose of each and every service that I mentioned. And you need to know how to troubleshoot if there is an issue, okay? Then if you know all these things, I would say 70 to 80% of your day-to-day -day activities are completed. Yeah, if I go for Azure VM, there could be various options, various operations that you do, like, you know, taking a snapshot of disk and, you know, creating a new VM from the disk, attaching a disk to the VM, detaching a disk from the VM. So there can be various operations that you perform. Maybe, you know, I'll provide you detailed information on each service in the upcoming videos. But as a whole, these are the responsibilities of Azure Administrator. It's a Azure Administrator, okay? There are scenarios where you need to extend your support for other components like Azure PaaS components. 
it could be uh, Azure App Services, it could be Azure Logic Apps, Function Apps, and it could be SQL Database. It could be Azure Event Hubs, right? It could be, uh, you know, any other Azure Pass components. That is, again, it's all depends. And, you know, if you're familiar with this component, it will be easy for you to understand the other components as well. All right. 